I want to talk about something really, really fast. I won't take up a lot of time. I know I tend to talk a lot, and this is going to be very, very short and sweet and to the point. Backer board. See all this backer board? This was a kitchen floor with half inch, half inch, quarter inch backer board. Um, they they prowled out their thin set. You can see it. It's all white here. They put their tile on. Here's all the tile. And that buttered their tile, and it was a good job. This job lasted a good part of a dozen years. Actually, I think a little better than a dozen years. So there was one little tiny area of about almost 500 square feet that had a little hiccup. Um, a tile had cracked over in the corner of the kitchen. One little area. In all that time, with this backer board down the way that it was, it was not glued and screwed. You see the bottom? That is just pure backer board back there. There's no thin set. Thin set's only on the top. I get very irritated when I see thin set put on plywood and then backer board, as they call it, glued and screwed. You can tell where the screws were at on this backer board, and I wasn't privy to the tear out. The homeowner did this, but um, you can definitively see the screws on the, here, get a better shot. You can definitively see where the screws were at, and here they are. All these screws were holding the backer board to the subfloor, and then they tiled on it, and it's lasted over well over a dozen years with no issues whatsoever. They did not glue and screw. There's no point in gluing and screwing. When you do the job correctly, you don't have to glue and screw. And I know I'm going to get a lot of comments and a lot of hate as far as you know my method can, as a compared to yours, or you think for some reason if you don't glue and screw that you're going to have a failure. And I'm here to tell you, after 20 years of doing flooring, I don't get callbacks. I've never had an issue. Even on my own floor, I do it the same way. I don't treat my customers any more than I would me. I cannot show you the floor, how pristine the floor was now, because I currently have another sheet of Duroc on top of where the plywood was, but I can tell you 100% the plywood was pristine. The customer didn't end up with a bad plywood job. I didn't end up spending three days trying to take up all this backer board off of the floor because they didn't glue and screw it and it lasted. And now we have new backer board that I was able to, once they got out all this flooring material, I was able to just nail this backer board down uh, to the floor and, you know, easy peasy. It didn't cause any distress to the plywood below and the customer didn't have to pay more for their job because I didn't have to spend, you know, five days taking all this stuff up and then ruining their subfloor. Yes, I get a little animated, <laughs> a little upset about it because time and time and again, I have another video I'm going to link below where, you know, trying to take up all of this stuff when it's glued and screwed is virtually impossible. It's a big pain. And so all I get on the comments there is, well, you should use this chisel or you should use that or I'm not worried about the next guy. Garbage. That's all garbage. I'm not going to use a chisel. I'm not going to spend, you know, two or three um, days trying to take all this stuff up and ruin the subfloor and ruin the subfloor so that I can't set my tile on here directly or my backer board on directly as it were and no I'm not going to go through all that so again my suggestion and regardless and despite what the backer board company tells you do not glue and screw it causes the next person a lot of angst a lot of headache and yes there will be the next guy that has to do this and you might be the next guy that has to do this um, and 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 more to the point there's, there's absolutely no reason to do it. As I said, 15 years, perfect floor, except for one little area over in the corner over there, which I can't show you, but I saw it before the floor was taken up. One little tiny area cracked, and that had nothing to do, I'm sure, with the backer board. But I thought I'd put that out there. I know I've rambled on way too long already. Don't glue and screw. If you want to screw it, fine. I use inch and a half roofing nails, and I use a lot of them, probably 30 or 40 each sheet, which the backer board companies call for. If you want to screw it, that's fine too. But the way it was set before made my job much easier, and I appreciate it. And if I could thank that guy from 15 years ago, I would. And um, that's all I have to say about that. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then subscribe. Hit that button and subscribe, and hit the bell. The bell will let you know right away when I post a new video. I make nothing off of YouTube, so please 
be a Patreon member. I'm going to post a link down below to my Patreon account and you can donate a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars a month. Just pledge that that on a monthly basis that will help me produce more videos and, and content so that you can watch and learn from my channel. And by the way, if you're going to call me, please, please, up there at the top of my channel where you see that picture up there on the right hand corner, there's a P which is for PayPal. Hit that PayPal link and donate at least $50 if you're gonna call. If you're gonna call for advice, donate to my PayPal, please. Donate first and then feel free to call me or email me uh, for advice. Otherwise, business calls only, please.